Hello, and welcome to One Stone. It's the first episode, and I already know what you're thinking. I want that shirt. Well, you can have it, and I'll show you how to do it. I'll stand up, you press screen print, and we'll use that to make a template for the shirt. All right, so I have the video paused on the laptop. And we're going to take a screenshot of the video and use that to make a template for our shirt. So let me walk you through that right now. And I don't have video capture, so we'll have to videotape the screen. So here's our video on the screen. We're going to take a screenshot by pressing print screen. We're going to put that into Microsoft Paint. Uh, Control V is paste. Now we have the whole screen right there. So we're going to want to bottom right hand corner is the zoom for Microsoft Paint in Windows 7. We're going to want to crop it. So we got the rectangle selection tool highlighted and we're going to go around the one sh stone shirt. We're going to click the crop button right next to the selection tool button and we have it cropped. That was fast and easy. Now we're going to open up Pixlr. P -I -X -L. R, and most of Photoshop tutorials work pretty good in Pixlr. Um, we got three choices. We're going to go with the first one. Um, open image from computer because some browsers have a problem with pasting into Pixlr. Okay. What we need to do now is square it up. So we're going to rotate it. Um, edit. Free transform. Uh, grab the little corner where it had the circle-y thing and rotate it so that most of it is pretty straight. Alright, then we got to make a rectangle right there. So that's one. There's another one. And just for the fun of it, let's just put another one down there. Okay, and these are all on a separate layer from our picture. So we can edit, free distort our picture and try to make it line up. If we were to do some Photoshop, we just click warp and pull this corner right here down. But uh, the free version, we don't have warp. So what we're gonna do is on our background layer, we're going to select that S, cause that S is basically the only thing that's a problem. And we can clean everything else up with the ruler. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna copy that. We're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna paste that on our new layer. Drag that over here and then do edit free distort that by itself you know we're going to adjust it we need to make it brighter and more contrasty so it's easier to see when we're trying to trace it let's crop it um enter cool let's turn off our layers perfect that is plenty to use for tracing Next, I'm going to take this down to my computer and just trace on the screen. The cool thing is, if you have one of the new tablets or a touchscreen computer, you can use, trace right on the computer screen because it's hard. Uh, this is an older laptop right here, and if I were to try to trace on it, you can sort of see when I touch it that the picture changes. So we don't want to touch trace onto this, but you could put a piece of plastic on it and trace on it or just trace it on your tablet or whatever else you have. All right, here I am tracing it onto my paper. I just taped four pieces of paper together so I have a nice big sheet to trace onto. It would be better if I use freezer paper to start off with. The trick with freezer paper is that you trace onto the freezer paper, you cut it out, and then you use your iron and it'll sort of stick to your clothes or whatever you're ironing it onto so that the paint doesn't seep underneath the paper. I don't have to tape it on like I do it in the next step and it ends up looking cleaner. But use whatever you got, and if you do it by hand with a paper, you get a little rough line, and they can tell that it's handmade, and it sort of looks different, it gives it character. Um, here I am using a razor blade to cut the paper out. I use the pocket knife I carry around at work. It has a sharp blade, you can replace the blades all the time. I don't use a scissors because Whenever I try to cut those corners out with scissors, the paper gets crinkled. And I don't use a hobby knife because I don't have blades for hobby knives. And after five minutes, my hobby knife is dull. So I use a razor, and those are cheap. I can get a pack of 15 blades for a buck. 
here I am taping the back of it, which you wouldn't have to do if you use freezer paper. And there's actually a lot of ways you could do this. Um, I'm cutting it out because if I were to just print it off and iron on paper and put it on because of the method we're using, it wouldn't look good because we took a screen print. Cutting it out by hand, using a ruler, you can't even tell that it was a screen print that we were using as a template to begin with. Um, I pat it down, it's nice and good. Here I am painting it and just blotch it on. You're trying not to get the paint underneath the paper. So if you're next to an edge, paint from the paper onto the cloth. Don't paint from the cloth to the paper because then you'll be pushing the paint underneath the paper. Um, the blotching method I'm using here is really good too. So you can blotch it on and that is good. And that's about it. After the shirt is painted, yeah, just let it dry and it is ready to go. The paint I use is acrylic paint and the acrylic paint is good. Um, I have shirts I've done with acrylic paint from five years ago and they're still holding up together. You can also get special fabric acrylic paint or spray paint. My little sister spray paints her shirts and they turn out good. I use basically the same process later to paint a trucker hat. Instead of cutting out a piece of paper, I use a vector program to draw the design and then I use a laser cutter to cut it out. The trucker hat had a lot smaller details on it so I didn't want to try to cut them out by hand. But that's about it. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you have a good day.